I'd like to call the ninth meeting of the 2014-2015 Common Council to order. Would the clerk please read the quote for today. Thank you, Mayor. People have been known to achieve more as a result of working with others rather than against them. Thank you. Next, we'll go on to the roll call. Um, there are 13 present. Uh, Alderman Van Akron, Alderman Herman, and Alderman Donahue are excused. Next, please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The next item on the agenda is the, is the approval of the minutes from our last meeting. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to approve. Second. Uh, thank you for that motion and support. Uh, motion's on the floor. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, next, we'll go on to resignations. City Attorney. Thank you, Your Honor. I uh, have a resignation <coughs> from uh, John Vandemal, who's advising that he's residing from the City Plan Commission because of the advanced technology he's not familiar with. He's not familiar with the new board docs, just now being used in the meetings to not feel comfortable learning at his age. Enjoyed serving on the committee for the past 15 years. Thank you. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Move to accept and file. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. The motion's before us. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Next is council appointments. City Attorney. Honorable members of the council, I hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. Marilyn Montemayor to be considered for appointment to the City Plan Commission to fill the unexpired term of John Vandemal, whose term expires 4-20-2015, signed by the mayor. That appointment will lie over. And Don Tershner to be considered for appointment to the Housing Authority to fill the unexpired term of Roland Wilson, whose term expires 4-27-2015, also that signed by the mayor. And that will also lie over. And then we'll go on to uh, confirmation of council appointments. City Attorney. Uh, Nancy Manchin to be considered for appointment to the Library Board to fill the unexpired term of Marge Segali, whose term expires 4-30-2016. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Move to confirm. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. The motion's on the floor. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those, well, no other, we have to call a roll for that. All eyes, one no. The motion passes. <laughs> Next is a presentation by uh, City Assessor Lee Grosnick on the City Reassessment Notice. Lee, please join us in front. Common Council, citizens of Sheboygan. Um, as everybody knows, we just completed a revaluation citywide, and um, it's generated some interest throughout the city. We've had a fair share of calls, and uh, there's been some uh, articles in the paper and such. And I wanted to share some information with the council and some of the citizens as to what we have done as far as the revaluation itself. Um, 
Some of these are questions that I've received. Some of these are some statistics. Um, facts about the revaluation process. We began in June of 2013. Um, it was completed by myself and my staff of three other employees. <coughs> we also had some additional professional help from Grota Appraisal. Uh, there were 15,516 residential parcels that were re reviewed and 1,352 commercial parcels. Um, as far as manufacturing, that gets <coughs> taken care of by the Department of Revenue. And the last revaluation was completed in 2006. Now, what is a revaluation and why is it necessary? A revaluation is an update of all assessments within the city. When property assessments are no longer within 10% of fair market value, the Wisconsin Department of Revenue notifies the city that they are out of compliance and that a revaluation should be done. Every year the DOR conducts a sales ratio study to establish an equalization ratio or level of assessment. In 2012, the DOR sent our office notice of 1,284 real estate transfers. It then became our job to determine which of the transfers were valid sales and the appraisers, after checking each individual sale, validated 321 transfers as arm's length transactions. Now that's, I think, a little less than 25%. It just goes to show you what we have to all throw out to find valid sales to work in this process. Um, the infor information, anyway, was then passed back to the DOR to analyze and create the 2013 ratio, which was at 110.68%. At this point, the city was no longer within 10% of fair market value, and the valuation was recommended. Now, I also included a listing of tax rates and assessment ratios. Um, and basically all I really wanted to show is how the assessment ratio changes from year to year. Uh, in 2006, you can see we were at 100% and that was right following the, uh, the last revaluation. Then in 2007, we had a normal good year and um, the sales, when compared to our assessments, the ratio came in at 94.84%. In 2008, it pretty much was at a standstill. It dropped down a little bit to 94.17%. In 2009, the turn started. It went back up a little bit to 94.92%. And then in 2010, all the way back up to 100%. And in 11, it continued as our assessments began for the first time ever, really, to be bigger than uh, what the sale prices were coming in at. And we were at 103.63%. In 2012, it jumped all the way to 108.67. And then last in 2013, it went to the 1068 How did we determine the values? I've been asked that a few times. Uh, in a revaluation, the value of your property is based on an analysis of the entire real estate market for a specified period of time before the project is even completed. The study of property sales between January 1st, 2011 and December 31st of 2013 allowed the appraisers to establish valuation parameters such as neighborhood ratings, influence factors, and market adjustments. 
The parameters were then applied to the sale properties and the calculations were tested for closeness to the sales, to the sales prices. After tests were completed and the results were satisfactory, assessments were generated for the non-sale properties and another review took place where the, uh, by the appraisers and the assessments were also reviewed by style and by square foot value ranges within each neighborhood. You're, you're ahead of me, okay. Did all assessments change at the same rate? Now, many of these questions are questions that I took over the phone of recent. Uh, anyway, uh, assessments do not change at the same rate. There are differences that we find between individual properties and between neighborhoods. Values can change from one neighborhood to another. We've all heard it, location, location, location. How can my assessment change when I haven't made any improvements to my property? General economic conditions such as interest rates, inflation or recession, and changes in tax laws. As property values change in the marketplace, so can assessments. How will my taxes change as a result of the new assessment? A change up or down in assessment does not mean that property taxes will increase or decrease. Your final, your final property tax amount is affected by budget needs of the city, the county, school district, and technical college. Property taxes are then determined by taking your assessment dividing by a thousand and multiplying by the tax rate. Will my assessment go up if I repair my property? Normal maintenance will help retain market value but generally will not affect your assessment in a significant way, which is the case generally with roof replacement. Um, generally doors, flooring, those types of items. Uh, what will happen to my assessment if I improve my property? Uh, not all improvements increase your assessment, but the following may. Um, I added uh, an added living area or a new garage, aluminum or vinyl siding. Uh, vinyl siding is when we run into a property that had slate or asphalt, <coughs> it's not really desirable anymore, like the vinyl, and so therefore it can increase the value of the property. Substantial modernization, such as kitchen or baths, addition, additions such as fireplaces or air conditioning, and just plain out extensive remodeling can all have an effect. Um, <coughs> Nobody inspected the inside of my home, so how could you reassess it? The assessor's office maintains a complete record of each property. Information is kept current through building permits, sales inspections, and exterior reviews. This information is used to develop the new assessment. <coughs> Did the foreclosed home next to my house affect my assessment? City appraisers did not take foreclosures and sheriff sales into a account when we reviewed the sales. They weren't considered to be arm's length transactions, so we just removed them from the equation. What can property owners do to keep their neighborhood from declining and bring more stability to their neighborhood? Um, there's a number of residents that called. They have picked up some of these older homes and uh, 
uh, I'm going to say at a very reasonable price. They've put money into them, fixed them up, but yet the neighbors around them haven't done so, and the, uh, the area is just in some ways holding uh, their value back. And um, anyway, I've, I've been encouraging residents to form these neighborhood associations, address neighborhood issues, and interested residents uh, should actually contact the planning department for more information. Uh, there's, uh, I believe, funds available for people that are low income. Uh, they, they can get to fix their homes. They just need to ask the questions, and I think if they were to stop at planning, they'd get the answers. Uh, what do I do if I disagree with the new assessment? Uh, on August 11th through the 15th, we will be holding open book. Uh, this week allows concerns, the concerned taxpayers the opportunity to discuss their assessments with the appraisers. Uh, if residents are interested in attending, they should just, all they need to do is call the city assessor's office at 459-3393. That's a specific line set uh, that we have for setting these appointments. And we'll be glad to discuss any of their questions or any of, uh, um, any of the assessments. And for those that want to go on and appeal their assessment, if they're still unhappy with the, the answers they get from uh, the assessor's office and they want to appeal beyond that, they need to contact the city clerk's office. There's a complaint form that needs to be filled out and filed with the uh, <coughs> clerk's office and then uh, they will be given an appointment time as to when to appear. <coughs> And the, uh, the Board of Review will be convening on September 9th. And uh, I believe that's pretty much all I have. Um, there are some good resources out there. Uh, the, 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 excuse me, the Department of Revenue has a website out there where you can get property information guides uh, for property owners. This is one that I just happened to print off. And it uh, gives them, basically explains a lot of what I just went through. And do I, do I have a few minutes for any questions or? Sure, go ahead. Take one or two. Alderman Hammond. Thank you. Um, thank you for your presentation. Quick question, is that form available online for people that want to appeal their assessment? Can they go out to the city's website and pick that form up instead of coming into City Hall? Um, boy. Or can we make it available online? I guess I is think, the better question. I think absolutely we could, sure. Great, thank you. Okay. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Lee, would it be possible or is it helpful if somebody agree, disagrees with their assessment for them to request somebody from your staff to come over and look at the property before they would come down to the Board of Review. We could make some arrangements for something like that, sure. Um, I've already uh, uh, made that accommodation to a couple citizens uh, upcoming in the, within the next week or so. so Yes, if, it, if, there's a, uh, if it's impossible for them to come down here and attend the open book or whatever, uh, we'll find a way to work with them. We can either discuss it over the phone or if they would rather that we went through the property, we can do that as well. Thank you for those questions. And Lee, thanks very much for your presentation. We appreciate all the work that you and the department did on this reassessment of the city. And I think that helps uh, the council and the citizens out to get more information on this. Appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Next, we'll move on to the public forum. <clears throat> Nothing this evening. Thank you. 
And then mayor's announcements. Uh, next week, Tuesday, we have an election coming up and the clerk has uh, consolidated some of the polling locations. So please check uh, their website to make sure you're going to the proper place to vote. Um, tomorrow night is our uh, national night out, America's night out uh, against uh, crime. It's coming up uh, on, uh, it's between 5 and 7.30 p.m. tomorrow. Things will kick off with uh, events at Fountain Park, including some food trucks, music, face painting for the kids. We'll have some law enforcement and fire department equipment on uh, the site for people to examine. And then um, we remind everybody to turn their porch lights on on August 5th. And this uh, event was brought to us by countywide, uh, Sheboygan Countywide Crime Stoppers. I'd also like to mention that uh, the historic Wolf Olson post uh, of 1230 uh, on, let's see, on Union Avenue is celebrating their 90th anniversary and they're gonna have a celebration. I think everybody has an invite on their desk to attend from 1 to 4 p.m. on August 9th. And uh, on September 5th council meeting, we'll have a special election of the Board and of Water Commissioners. And if anyone's interested, they should respond to Alderman Hammond, to myself, and uh, we'll get their names uh, down as candidates for that election. And next, uh, I'd just like to mention that last week there was a groundbreaking for the first of six new homes to be built in the Erie Avenue Revitalization Project. This project was started back in 2011 as a partnership between Habitat for Humanity, the Gateway Neighborhood Association, Sheboygan Neighborhood Pride, and the City of Sheboygan. And along the way, this project has also received some needed assistance from the Sheboygan County Treasurer's Office and also some financial sponsorship from U.S. Bank. Uh, the ceremony was a culmination of a longtime dream of years of hard work, uh, mostly by City Planning Director Chad Pelichek, and he was assisted by three determined individuals from the Habitat for Humanity Lakeshore uh, group, Dennis Ketterman, Tom Foley, and Greg Ryan were recognized on that uh, day. They banded together with city staff to accomplish their joint vision. They believe that focusing the combined efforts of Habitat for Humanity and the city of Sheboygan on this one block of Erie Avenue in the Gateway neighborhood could transform this neighborhood and begin to transform the city of Sheboygan. Dennis Ketterman is with us today. Uh, he's representing Habitat for Humanity Lakeside, and I'd like to have him step up and make a short address to the council. Good evening. My name is Dennis Ketterman, like you said, and we are really excited. I find it interesting that in working on this project, what was your opening statement tonight? Let's work together as a community and group instead of against each other. Well, that is exactly what we're doing here, bringing all these groups together along with Habitat for Humanity, is a fantastic thing that we're doing. We could not do this project without the city, you know, doing all the things of purchasing the homes and demolishing them so we can put good, decent families into decent and affordable homes. A couple things you might want to know. This is going to be the home we're going to start putting up. That's the color the family's chosen. We have three basic designs, and the porches can be moved on either side, so we can have a variety of looks throughout the, throughout the block. We also have different colors throughout the block. And just for your information, too, the community is going to be hugely involved with this with all the volunteers, corporate sponsorships. We're hoping to see some of you out there coming and giving us a lunch or maybe having a work day, something like that. But you also need to know that these families work hard for this. This family's gonna have to put in 500 hours of sweat equity in order to get this home. They need to go through financial advisement. They need to work with Habitat, with their family selection committee that is going to make sure they, they run properly through all the procedures going on and to make sure that once they're in the home, that they will be uh, taking care of it. And the second thing they'll be doing is getting a non-interest loan for the cost of the home. So they do pay us back for that. They do give us a sweat equity. So they're not just giving this home and saying thank you. And we just are so excited about the fact that we're making this block and this entry into Sheboygan look so much better and so great. And uh, I thank P Chad Palaszczuk for being a, a real sponsor of 
getting us all together and working on this. And not only this, but then our long-term project is ex gonna extend beyond this block, up and down the street, north and south of those blocks too. So Habitat is super excited about being part of this, and we thank you for bringing this all together. So, Dennis, thank you much, from, very much for your words and also for being a great partner in this project. Appreciate it. Next, we'll go on to hearings. Um, 2.1 is a hearing for the proposed assessments for water lateral replacements in South A Street from Kentucky Avenue to Union Avenue. Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Move to close. Second. Thank you for that motion. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Mm -hmm. Motion passes. Next, we'll go on to the consent agenda, including items 3.2 through 3.20. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and file all our O's, accept and uh, adopt all our C's, and put all resolutions and ordinances upon their passage. Second. Thank, thank you for that motion. Under discussion, Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I would like to pull forward uh, document number 3.2 and document 3.16 and refer them to the Committee of the Whole. Second. Thank you for that motion. Under discussion? Three point two, and it was three point six. Sixteen. Sixteen. Alderman Hammond. Um, I'm just kind of curious um, why we would need to refer these to. One's a, a newspaper article um, that the entire council's had an opportunity to see when it was referred to committee, and the other one was an informational budget document that, again, the entire council got. Um, as part of uh, Alderman Ben Akron. Um, so I'm not sure why these need to go to Committee of the Whole um, and when everybody's got the information they need. Thank you for that comment. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. I believe in the, the way this is worded for 3.2, uh, Alderman Ben Akron was, uh, wanted this review during the up upcoming uh, budget process. It's my understanding that there may be a committee of the whole meeting next week that's gonna deal with the budget. And on 316, that was a, a article regarding health insurance rates, a survey done by our, our insurance carrier, M3. And when we discussed this at salary and grievance last week, it, we made a motion to file it, but I wasn't aware at that time that there was gonna possibly be a committee of the whole meeting and I think uh, this is one of the topics that's very important during our budget discussions, and that is the uh, uh, health insurance issue. Thank you for that comment. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, not to beat a dead horse, but duly noted that uh, we received the article and it uh, addresses health insurance rates, and we all know that health insurance is an issue, but I'd rather focus on our health insurance rates. Everybody's had an opportunity to read the article. Same thing with the um, information that Alderman Van Akron put together, which again, very timely, but the, I think his number one intent was to get that information to the hands of the council members, which this document does. I don't need to know that we need to waste time on the committee of the whole meeting just to file a document that everybody has possession of. So thank you. Thank you for those comments. If there's no other discussion, um, we have a mo <clears throat> excuse clerk, me. clerk will call the roll. To refer. To refer these two documents. Um, five ayes, eight noes. Motion is defeated. Uh, the consent agenda again includes everything 3.2 through 3.20. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage on the consent agenda?
13 ayes. Motion passes. We'll move on to reports of officers. Uh, items 4.1 through 4.6 4. will be referred to various committees. Under resolutions, resolution uh, 5.1 is a resolution by Alderman Heidemann authorizing the advertising of bids for the construction and installation of a sanitary sewer in Whedon Creek, approximately 1,300 feet west of South Taylor Drive and construction installation of a water main approximately 1,600 feet west of South Taylor Drive. Um, Alderman Heidemann. Thank you, Mayor. First, I need a, a motion to suspend. Second. We have a motion and a second to suspend. All those in favor of suspension, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Under suspension, Alderman Heidemann. Okay, yeah, I put the resolution upon his passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. The documents before us for discussion. Any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk, let's see, we'll call that as a voice vote. Uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Items 5.2 through 5.4 will be referred to the Finance Committee. Under reports of committees, 6.1 is an RC by finance to whom was referred resolution number 46 of 1415 recommending authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2014 budget to establish revenue and appropriations for Wisconsin Department of Public Instruction grant for library services. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and adopt and put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage. Thirteen ayes. Motion passes. Item 6.2 is a report of committee by salary and grievances to whom was referred RC number 75 of 1415 by the Committee of the Whole who met and discussed Charter Ordinance Number 1 of 1415 being subject to the Home Rule provisions of Section 66.0101 of Wisconsin State Statutes providing for the appointment of the City Attorney in lieu of current method of election by the voters to such office under Wisconsin Statute 62.09 subsection 3B4 uh, recommends filing the documents. Alderman Dassler. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and adopt uh, to file the document. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of the motion, is there any discussion first of all? All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion nay. passes. I'm sorry. Nay. I heard a nay. Really? <laughs> Item 6.3 is an RC by salary and grievances to whom was referred Charter Ordinance Number 1 of 1415, being subject to the Home Rule provisions of Section 66.0101 of the Wisconsin Statutes, providing for the appointment of the City Attorney in lieu of the current method of election by the voters to such office under Wisconsin Statute 62.09, subsections 3B4, and Resolution Number 43 of 1415 providing for the submittal of substitutes of Charter Ordinance Number 1 of 1415 to a referendum of the voters recommends that Resolution Number 43 of 1415 be passed, incorporating the attached subs of chapter Charter subs of Charter Ordinance Number 1 of 1415. The change in subs of Charter uh, Ordinance Number 1 of 1415 makes two changes to the original proposed charter ordinance. First, it increases the municipal experience from two years to three. Alderman Dassler. Thank you, Mayor. I uh, move we accept and adopt and pass resolution incorporating the subs of uh, charter ordinance 1-1415. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. That's on the floor for discussion. Uh, Alderman Koth. Thank you, Mayor. I'm going to be a no on this resolution also. Um, I feel as aldermen, we were elected to make the most important decisions at City Hall. I feel this is a decision that we can make as a body. And, um, 
Thank you for those comments, Alderman Koth. Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Mayor. I also will be voting against this. I think it's quite ridiculous that this um, council can't um, make a decision on this. Uh, there is no outcry for a referendum. It's a pretty easy decision. It's pretty common uh, across the state and across the country. Um, I, we, we do get paid the big bucks, and I kind of say that uh, tongue in cheek, but um, we, we are here to make uh, decisions on behalf of the city, so just to send this, uh, something as simple as this to referendum, I think it's ridiculous. Thank you for those comments. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll on passage? Five eyes, eight no's. A motion fails. Item 4.6 is an RC by the Finance Committee who has referred RO number uh, 75 of 1415 and recommends referral of a claim from Wallace Hahn for alleged damages to his vehicle when a rock flew from the parking utility lawnmower into his windshield. Alderman Hammond. Mr. Mayor, that'll be I'm sorry, that's transit. just a referral to parking and transit. Um, next is item 6.5, an RC by salary and grievances, to whom was referred RO number 27 of 1415, submitting a notice of claim filed on behalf of Jeffrey Herman and recommends that the claim be denied and to direct the city attorney to send a notice of disallowance. Alderman Dassler. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I move that we uh, accept and adopt. Second. Thank you for that motion in support. Is there any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. <coughs> it's laid over. Uh, resolution 44 of 1415 by Alderman Heideman, Boren, Bellinger, Thiel, and Van Akron, being a relocation order of the city of Sheboygan, Sheboygan County, Wisconsin. Alderman Heideman. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion. Okay, what this resolution has to deal with is uh, putting uh, sidewalk in places where the, the previously there is a sidewalk. Thank you for that explanation, Alderman Heideman. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Uh, let's see, we're going to have to do a roll call vote on that. Thirteen ayes. Motion passes. Next is other matters. City Attorney. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Honor. 8.1 is a, an RO by the City Clerk submitting communication from Ryan Noel Zimmerman requesting a waiver for the sex offender residency restrictions in order to live at 1032 B Lincoln Avenue. That will be referred to public protection and safety. And 8.2 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2015 and June 30, 2016. That will be referred to the Law and Licensing Committee. Next item we have on the agenda is a closed session. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to convene in closed session under exemption provided in Section 19851G of the Wisconsin Statutes for the purpose of conferring with the City's legal counsel who is rendering oral advice concerning strategy to be adopted by the city with respect to litigation in which it is likely to become involved, reclaim of Jeff Herman. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Would the clerk please call the roll? Your Honor, I've got a I'm sorry, go ahead, city attorney. Um, yes, council, this was put on in the event the, uh, the council wished to discuss claim 6.5, uh, uh, the claim of uh, Jeff Herman, the recommendation from the Salary and grievance was to uh, deny the claim and file the notice of disallowance, which passed all eyes. So, uh, you know, it's up to you whether you still want to go into closed session, but that was what the purpose of this discussion was for. Alderman Hammond. I would move to withdraw my no uh, motion. Second. Okay, motion has been withdrawn. Uh, next on the item is uh, adjournment. Alderman Hammond. Move to adjourn. Second. 
Moved and seconded. All those in favor of adjourning, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? We stand adjourned. Thank you very much. Adjourned without doing anything.